name is Lloyd Fredendahl. Um, I'm the president of the credit union. I have the easy job here. I just get to welcome everybody and thank you for coming out on a very warm um, Thursday night. Uh, we've got a lot of information that we're going to provide to you today, but this we put this together for you. So at the end of the presentations, please stay around, ask your questions, ask them in a group environment, track down any of these people here with the Newmark logo, except for me, because I probably won't be able to answer your <laughs> the more detailed questions, but I'll help you find an answer for sure. Um, and the most important thing is make sure that you've registered for the um, gift card giveaway, because that's really the only reason anybody came, right, was for the, for the $100 gift card. Um, a lot of time and effort has gone into this. We've had a lot of staff, both from the former Pioneer folks, as well as the, the Newmark staff, has spent a lot of time on this. And, uh, we, you know, we feel very confident in where we are, um, but conversions are conversions. So um, we will talk more in that regard. And so I'm going to introduce uh, Michelle Baylog, who's our Executive Vice President and General Counsel. She'll be creating a release for you, sir, before, before, Just we leave, you. before we leave today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to welcome all of you, and I'm glad you're able to be here, and welcome to Newmark and being a member of a credit union. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what it means to be a member of a credit union. If you've not been a member of a credit union before, some of you may have belonged to credit unions when at your job or through the community. There are a few in the area, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about credit unions, and then we'll get started on who we are. Um, I'm going to tell you something about credit unions. I got here to the credit union about 15 years ago. I worked for a bank in the past. Um, I've been with the credit union for 15 years, and I'm going to tell you something about credit unions. That's not a lot of tenure. We have employees with Newmark who have been with us for 30, 35 years. Um, so. I, I guess I'm a lifer now that I've hit that 15 year mark. But what I love about credit unions is that you are the owners. I'm an owner, you're an owner. We're um, a not-for-profit cooperative. So what does that mean? Some of you may have seen other cooperatives, whether it's a housing cooperative, a farm cooperative. Um, I always think about like the dairy cooperatives out in Indiana, the big, you know, farms out there that they come together. And what this is, is it's all of our members come together and I hate using the analogy, but it's like the wonder, it's a wonderful life. It's your money and your money is in John's house and Mary's house and Dave's business. And that's really what it is. So as depositors, your money goes to making loans to other members. And maybe you have both. You have a deposit, you have a loan. So that's really who we are. We don't have stockholders. Um, we're all voting members of the credit union. A little bit about our board of directors. They're all volunteer. They do not get paid by the credit union. Mm -hmm. Most of them came from what we call our select employer groups. So a lot of people think they can't join a credit union if you don't belong, especially to a union. That's not true. The credit union doesn't just mean union workers. <laughs> So we do have a field of membership, which ours is pretty good size in the state of Illinois and parts of Indiana. But our board of directors comes from our original relationships with um, the Caterpillar plant in Joliet, um, the BP um, offices out in Naperville. We have um, the retired business manager from the IBEW in um, Joliet. So we do have a wide variety of board members. And like I said, they're all volunteer and they commit themselves because they are members and owners of the credit union. A couple of our board members have been with the board. We don't know the exact years because they claim to not know, but we think it's over 40 years for a few of them. Mm -hmm. So that just tells you the longevity of Newmark, um, our relationship with North Star Credit Union. We all came together a couple years ago and we just have the same values and want to help our communities and help our members out. So I am going to turn it over to Jessica, who's going to tell you a little bit more okay. about your accounts, which I think is probably why you're here not to let hear me give a lecture on what credit unions are. But if you do have questions at the end about what a credit union is and specifically about Newmark, I will take my 15 years experience and happily answer them. And if I can't, I will go to some of our employees that have been here for a long time. So <laughs> thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Um, I'm Jessica Mellon. I'm our Chief Operations Officer. I've been in the banking industry since about 1995 and um, at Newmark Credit for Union for just under 15 years. Um, 
I'm going to talk to you about the details of your accounts. And we'll have a Q&A at the end where you can ask questions like Lloyd said of in a group setting or if you choose to ask one-on-one -on -one questions, we can answer those for you too. If for some reason we don't have the right expert here to answer your question, by all means, we'll take down your information and we'll have an expert reach out to you um, tomorrow so that you get that information. You will receive a letter in the mail the end of next week, early the first week of July. And that letter is gonna have a lot of details in it for you. It's gonna to talk to you about what your member number is. It's gonna to talk to you about all of your account numbers. It will have a table in it that will show you your Pioneer State Bank account numbers and your Newmark account number. So you have all that information. That envelope's going to be marked important because it does have your account information in it. So watch for that, make sure you get that. Ordinarily, we would not send account numbers through the mail, but you need to know what they are. So they're gonna come to you um, in the end of next week, early the week after that. That letter will cover everything I'm gonna talk about today. So it's a lot of detail. It's just sometimes easier to hear it from somebody instead of just reading this giant packet of information. But know that you do have that giant packet of information to refer to should um, you, know, you not remember something or you just wanna get a little more information. Um, so first thing I wanna say is that um, I understand why you bank at Pioneer State Bank and now Newmark Credit Union. And honestly, it's because of these guys. They are amazing. The Pioneer State Bank team, the staff is incredible. So I've had the pleasure of working with them over the last few months, um, namely with um, Sarah and Katie and Kim and Mark and Monica. They have been incredibly helpful in this process. They're very knowledgeable. All of the staff love their customers, now the members, right? Um, and they do everything they can to try to help. And that's gonna continue forward. We're so fortunate to bring them onto our Newmark family. Um, they, they truly go above and beyond and will continue to do that through this process. So an important date for you to know is July 10th. July 10th is a Monday. That is the first day that all of our systems will be together as one. So that's the day that you can go visit any Newmark Credit Union location. You can use any Newmark Credit Union ATM. All of our ATM networks that we have, so there's 56,000 ATMs you can use for free. We'll go through that in a little more detail in a minute. But that's the day where you have access to all of it. It's also the first day that our Pioneer State Bank team will be working live on our system. So we're asking for, you know, a little patience, give them some extra love that day. You know, today they know how to do everything on the systems. They've had a ton of training while keeping the bank moving forward, while continuing to serve members. It's just different when it goes live, right? So we're gonna have a lot of staff out here to help answer your questions, to help answer their questions and move them along. They'll learn super fast, and they have been learning super fast. But anything you could do to you know, cheer them up that day, I know that they'll appreciate it, and they'll do the same for you. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> so let's talk about your membership. Every membership has what's called a member number. If you're somebody who likes to memorize account numbers, that's the one to memorize. Do you have to memorize it? No. We can look up your account by your name by your social, by your Pioneer account number, debit card number, many ways to find your account. But if you like to memorize a number, that's the one to memorize. It will be something like 2400 12345. Just something like that, okay? That number represents this account ownership. So it's easier to give you an example. So if I'm a Pioneer State Bank customer and I have my savings account, my checking account, my car loan, my mortgage, maybe a CD, and they're all joint with my husband. Let's just say I happen to be the first person on that signature card, then I become the primary owner of the account, my husband's joint, that's no different than it is here, and then I'll have this membership that's me and my husband, and then all those accounts underneath it, right? My savings account, my checking account, it's just sort of like an umbrella that's over all of my accounts. But let's say I have another account that's maybe a savings account that's joint with my mom. No problem, that will be a separate membership. 
right? Because the ownership doesn't match. So when we send statements, all of the accounts under one membership come on one statement. So if my mom, my mom should not see my accounts that I'm joined on with my husband, right? And nor should my husband see the account that I'm joined on with my mom, right? They're gonna be two separate memberships, two separate statements, right? So we've got these two memberships. Every single membership is going to have what's called a prime share account. Just like Michelle said, everyone in the room is an owner of the credit union. And to designate that ownership, you have one share of ownership that's valued at $5. It doesn't matter if I have $7 at the credit union, if I have $7,000 at the credit union, if I have $7 million at the credit union, I still have one $5 share of ownership. That $5 share of ownership is really just like a little savings balance of five bucks. And it sits in this account called a prime share. That prime share account really is just a regular savings. So you can use it like your regular savings. If you have a regular savings, it's just getting converted over to a prime share account. If let's say you only have a loan at Pioneer State Bank and no savings account, that's okay. We'll open a prime share for you so that you have that share of ownership in the credit union, okay? So the reason I tell you that is when you look at your statements, I don't want you to be surprised and say, well, what is this prime share account? Where did it come from? That's your share of ownership in the credit union. Um, we do encourage you to use it like a regular savings account. That's great. In fact, we'll talk about that a little more in a minute. So now we know we have our membership. And in my case, there's two memberships. Both of them are gonna have their prime share and then all those accounts underneath, right? Each of those accounts, just like it is right now at Pioneer State Bank, each of those accounts has its own account number. We call it uh, ACH MICR number. Don't worry about that part. It's just a number that routes financial um, transactions, right? So it's what says, put this money in the checking account instead of the savings account or put this money in the loan, right? You don't have to remember that number. Don't even worry about what that number is. It will be in your letter so that you have it for reference. The only time you ever need that number is if you're gonna set up, let's say, a new direct deposit, right? Let's say that um, we know all the systems come together on July 10th. Let's say on September 1st, I start a new job at a new employer and I wanna set up direct deposit to go to my Newmark checking account. I'll provide my employer with Newmark's routing number and that MICR number associated with that checking account because that's what says, hey, put that money in the checking account instead of the savings account or the loan or anywhere else. Now let's say I make a mistake with that and I just give my uh, routing number and member number. We'll still get it where it needs to go. We're just gonna take a extra, couple extra steps to get that cleaned up so that it goes to the right place, okay? It's always fastest if it's the most accurate information, but we have methods of getting things routed to the right place, even if it's not quite right. So that kind of explains those MICR numbers you're gonna see in the letter. That explanation will be written out in the letter so you have a reference to it. Um, when you see it, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. It's, it makes a lot of sense. You'll have your member number, that's your umbrella, and then you'll have all those shares and loans in each of them. Each of those savings account, checking account, loans, they'll each have their own little account number tied to them, okay? We have built cross-reference records. So if you came in to see the tellers and you gave them your Pioneer State Bank account number, they could type that right in and they'll find your Newmark account number just like that. Super easy. The other thing that lets us do is that you, if you have an existing direct deposit that's coming to your Pioneer State Bank account, so maybe it's your retirement, maybe it's your Social Security, whatever it is, if that's going to your Pioneer State Bank account, that'll continue. Our cross-reference records will recognize it. It'll say, hey, we've got a deposit that's coming to Pioneer's routing number and this Pioneer account number okay, we know where to put that, right? Because we've created these cross-reference records. So those will post without a problem. Hello. Hi. Um, welcome. Um, so those will post without a problem. Um, there's no action needed today with that, right? Those will just continue to post, continue to post, continue to post. We do ask in time, 
Wait for your first one to post. Wait for your second one to post. But down the line, when you have a free minute, you, wouldn't, you want to reach out to your depositors and update that information. And you're updating that with your Newmark routing number and the MICR number of the account you want that to go to. Again, no rush. Don't worry about it for July 10th. We want your first deposit to come in just as it is now. Let your second deposit come in. Let it sit for a little bit. That's okay, right? Just in time, we'll need to retire that routing number. And the only way to retire a routing number is if there's no more um, activity coming through that, that path. And so we'll work with you to help you do that. It's not urgent. Again, you're, everything's going to post, but down the line, we're going to want you to make those changes to those accounts. Let's see. I don't want to leave anything important out. Oh, let's talk about checks. So um, consumer accounts and business accounts are a little bit different, OK? But in all cases, you can continue to use your Pioneer Bank, uh, State Bank checks for now. After July 10th, and once you receive your new checks from us, start using your new checks. Those checks will have your routing number and the maker number for your checking account on them. So your old Pioneer State Bank checks will continue to clear. We've got all those cross-reference records built so that it recognizes where to post those checks. So you'll be fine in that regard. But again, once you get your new checks, start using those um, new checks. Now, um, for those of you that may be business owners, the thing that's different about businesses is that they use all different kinds of checks. Sometimes they're like personal checks, sometimes they're um, computer printed checks, sometimes they're the business size that get written on. It's just, you know, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want to presume what a business owner might need. And so we have mailed our business owners um, a form that they can give us some information about the kinds of checks that they use, and they can return it to their Pioneer State Bank branch, and we'll be sure to get the right kind of checks ordered, okay? If you're a business owner and you didn't receive that form, check in with your Pioneer State Bank team. We can get that form for you or get that information from you to make sure we order the right kind of checks for you, okay? And then if you have any special concerns about your checks, maybe you have just a special case that you wanna uh, you know, talk about an exception or ask about something, please see your Pioneer State Bank team. They can help you with this. We wanna make the transition as easy as possible for you and help you in any way that we can. So please, if there's anything that's sort of lingering out there, um, talk to your team, they wanna help you. Let's talk about loan payments. Um, if you have a loan at Pioneer State Bank, and you're paying with a coupon book. That's fine. We don't need to send you a new coupon book. You can keep using that coupon book. It's fine. We can cross-reference that account number. It's very easy for us to do and um, post those payments. No problem, okay? If you have, um, let's say, a transfer, like a scheduled transfer from your Pioneer State Bank checking account to your Pioneer State Bank loan, those are set up. We, we've captured all that information. We'll have those set up in our system, so those will just continue to make payments just as they are now. And in fact, if you have those set up to pay a couple days before your due date, or maybe a couple days after your due date, we've captured all that information, and we'll continue it on as you see it now. If you make your payment by ACH, so here's how you would know. Let's say that you, um, booked a loan with Alicia, a car loan with Alicia, and at the time you signed your paperwork, um, you said, I want my payment to come from my Chase account. And Alicia said, great, give me your routing number and your account number, and I'll get that set up to pull from your Chase account to pay your Pioneer State Bank loan. If you did that, those will all continue on. We've got all that information, no action needed. They just continue on as they are now. The case where you might wanna take a take some action, is if you have a, um, let's say you have your checking account at Chase, and I just use Chase in place of any, any other bank, right? But if you had your checking account at Chase, and you use Chase bill pay to pay your Pioneer State Bank loan, you would want to log into that bill pay system 
and update that information. Okay, you would want to update it to Newmark, Credit Union. You can keep the same PO box that you're sending it to now. That's not a problem. You'd want to update that account number, all that information to make sure it matches. Just to ensure really fast processing, it'll still post to your account even if you don't update that information, but it will likely come into an exception report, so it'll have to be manually handled which is fine. I just like for you to have your payments post right away when they get here instead of having someone uh, work that report to get that to post for you, okay? Debit cards. So your Visa debit card, um, you received a mailing that said your Visa debit card would re be received either this week or next week. So I have some mailing updates on that. Um, the earliest you will receive your debit card is toward the end of next week but it's more likely that they'll be delivered on July 3rd, right? It might be July 3rd, July 5th. So end of this week, early next week is when you should receive your new debit card. Your new debit card will come in a very plain envelope and that's by design, right? It, it'll just be very, very plain. If you feel the envelope and there's a card in it, don't throw it in your garbage, don't throw it in your shred bin, right? Hang on to that, you're gonna wanna keep that. You can go ahead and activate your debit card right away activate it, there'll be a prompt to set your PIN number so you can use it at the ATM. Go ahead and go through all that process and then just put it in your wallet, hold on to it. Your Pioneer State Bank debit card will work all the way through early in the morning on July 10th. We don't expect you to remember that. There's gonna be a flyer in with your debit card that will also be part of the big mailing that you're getting. But so what'll happen is your Pioneer State debit card will stop working somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning on July 10th, and then immediately, immediately your Newmark card starts working. So it's sort of this one goes off, one goes on. So for most of us, we're not out using our debit card at three in the morning, but if we are, <laughs> if we are, <laughs> um, if you try to use your Pioneer card at three in the morning that morning and it doesn't work, just use your Newmark card and you'll be just fine, okay? Um, let's see, with, oh, with um, debit cards, something you should know. So we're part of two um, very large surcharge-free ATM networks. We don't want you to ever pay an ATM fee. That's crazy. Don't pay ATM fees. We want to prevent that at all costs. So all Newmark ATMs, of course, will be free to you. And of course, that includes the um, legacy pioneer locations. Those will all be free to you. Um, also, we're part of the AllPoint network and the co-op ATM network. Um, between the two, it's about 56,000 ATMs that are free. They're all over the place. Um, we have a locator on our website. We have a locator on our app, which you don't even have to log into the app to use it. You could just download the app and use the little ATM locator part. Um, you can call us, we'll help you find one. But they're in um, some places where they're located, most credit unions. And then also um, Target, Speedway, 7-Eleven, um, CVS. Mm, they're, they're in a lot of places. Um, 56,000 locations. So um, we can surely find an ATM that you can use for free if you're out of this area. Clearly, if you're right here, these ATMs are the most convenient for you. Um, let's see, make sure, oh, um, debit cards. Let's say for some reason uh, you didn't receive your debit card. No worries. We'll have instant issue machines at each of our branches. So from July 10th on, should you ever lose your debit card, it gets broken, it's stolen, whatever happens with your debit card and you need a replacement, you can come right to a Pioneer State Bank branch and get your um, a replacement debit card right on the spot. So they'll just make it for you, hand you a new one, you're good to go. Um, so should you not receive your debit card for any reason, stop by, we'll get you a new one. It's, it's easy to do. Um, online and mobile banking. If you're not, even if you're not currently, ooh, Alexa, uh, um, even if you're not currently a mobile or online banking user, we highly encourage you to use it. It's so convenient, um, it's free, it's um, a great way to check your balances. If you're a debit card user, you definitely want to use it. Um, if for nothing else, for the feature of card controls, 
because what Card Controls does for you is allow you to turn on and off your debit card. So if you lose it over the weekend, you're like, ah, I, I'm sure it's at home, but what if it's not at home? Just turn it off, right? And then when you find it, you can turn it back on. Or if you don't find it, then come in and tell us your card's lost or stolen. We'll block it for you and get you a whole new card. Okay, so it's really important to use it for that purpose. Also on the um, you know, debit card front through online and mobile banking, you can set up alerts with your card, um, which I use and it's very fast. So if I'm at McDonald's and use my card, I have an alert like immediately on my phone. So I know that purchase was made. Well, of course I know that purchase was made because I was there, but what if my card had been compromised and a fraudster used my card? I'd get that alert and I could shut my card off immediately. So it's really great for just kind of keeping up with your card and having full control over that. I love those alerts. I honestly couldn't live without it. I have them set up on my son's card too, so I can see what he's spending his money on, which is great. Um, yeah, we learn a lot when we have teenagers as, <laughs> as kids, that's for sure. Um, so if you want to be an online banking user, which we highly encourage, um, in your packet, there'll be information. It's a really nice graphic piece that um, our marketing department created. Um, it'll show you exactly how to log into online banking or mobile banking. Um, both systems share the same credentials, so you just register one time. So you'll register either through the desktop version or through the app, and then you can use those credentials in either place, whatever you like to use. Um, most of the time when you register, and registration is super easy. It's going to ask you for your member number, right? Which we know, right? It's going to ask you for that member number, and it's going to ask you for information on the primary owner to make sure you are who you say you are when you're logging in, right? And then from there, it's easy. You're setting a username and password that then you'll use in the future. Um, most of the time, those registrations just approve like that. They're automatically approved. You're good to go. You're using your digital services. Every once in a while, a piece of information doesn't quite match, right? And it could be something simple. It could just be a typo, right? It could be um, maybe a, a birth date. There's a transposition in the, in the system, right? It's been there forever, and it was just something that was entered weird, or just a field that wasn't ever entered at all, right? Especially for um, accounts that have been on the, on the system for a very long time, that can happen. If that happens, don't worry. It's going to give you an alert that says that your um, registration went into a pending status. We will have a whole group of operation uh, staff watching for that to happen. And when it happens, we're going to be approving those as fast as we can. There might be times where the information doesn't match enough that we're like, hmm, I just want to make a phone call to this member and just make sure it's them logging in. So you may get a phone call from us if that happens just to verify some information, okay? Um, additionally, so we'll work through those in order. Um, if you have an urgent need, you need to get in there right now. You're a business owner. You got to get in there and get your bills paid. That's okay. Just come to a Pioneer State Bank location, which will be Newmark. I, I just can't get over saying that, but uh, just for clarity, right? Uh, come to a location. They'll be able to help you out. We'll have staff here who can help you out. Call a location. Call the main Newmark number. Any of those avenues, we can get help for you right away. If it's like an urgent situation, you need help right away. We'll, we'll take care of that for you, okay? Um, bill pay. If any of you are currently using Pioneer State Bank's bill pay, it's really important for you to know that your payee information, your payments and payee information will not transfer over to Newmark Credit Union's bill pay system. You'll need to re-register for bill pay. And so there's an important date for you to know, and that is June 30th. So at 7 a.m. on June 30th, we will have no more access to the bill pay system. So that means um, members won't have access, Newmark won't have access, our legacy Pioneer State Bank team won't have access. We will have no way to access that bill pay system. So if you're a bill pay user, and you want to grab some information from there. So maybe you want to capture account numbers. Maybe you want to capture how much you pay a place every month, anything like that. Make sure you get that information before June 30th. And if you need help, again, your Pioneer State Bank team can help you uh, get that information if you need it. 
Any payments you have scheduled will continue to pay through July 7th. Um, after that, they just get canceled. And then when you register for Newmark uh, online banking, register for bill pay, and, all, and then you can set up all your payments however you like them to pay, okay? Super easy system. I use it to pay all my bills. I, I love it. It's a lifesaver for me. So let's talk about e-statements. I know this is something where um, there was a lot of concern um, expressed from um, customers of Pioneer. So let's just kind of address it head on. Um, it's very costly to mail paper statements. And not only is it costly, it poses a security risk. Now, many of you have PO boxes, which is wonderful for this reason. But if any of you have regular mailboxes, they're just sitting in your mailbox. And we know in northern Illinois, there has been a ton of mail theft in the last, really in the last year. And um, thieves leverage that information to commit fraud. And so um, it's important to protect that information as much as you can. So Newmark does charge a paper statement fee, right? It's a month, it's, I don't wanna say it's a monthly fee, it's a per statement fee, right? So if you get a monthly statement, it's a monthly fee, if it's a quarterly statement, it's a quarterly fee. However, we do not want you to pay fees. We don't want you to pay fees. So there's a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is sign up for e-statements. Electronic statements, it's just a, a digital uh, reproduction of your statement. It archives them for you so that you don't have to maintain those at home. It keeps them out of your mailbox. It's a, a super affordable way to handle statements. But in addition, if you are under the age of 21, if you are 65 years all old or older, you do not pay a fee for e-statements or for paper statements. I'm so sorry. For e-statements are free, paper statements, right? You don't pay for paper statements. Um, additionally, um, you know, if you have some sort of special situation, talk to your Pioneer State Bank um, representative. Let's see what we can do for you. But nobody at Pioneer State Bank is going to be charged a paper statement fee until 2024, right? So the idea is that we give you this, uh, this um, opportunity to get to know us and get to love Newmark Credit Union. Your same team that you love already will be here um, so it gives you that chance to really uh, fall in love with a credit union, do more with your money, make the most of your deposits here, and see the value in the credit union. And then if you have a special case, by all means, bring that forward to us, and let's see how we can help you out with that. Um, again, we don't like our members to pay fees if we can avoid it. Um, we are not-for-profit. We certainly um, care about all of our earnings go back to our members, right? And they go back to our members through uh, more favorable rates. That's on the deposit side and the loan side and through lower fees. So we like to avoid fees wherever we can. So just talk, if it's a concern that you have, talk to us. Let us try to help you through that. Um, and again, anyone who's 21 years old or younger, uh, so we're thinking like our students, right? And then anyone who's 65 years old or older, not paying a fee for those uh, paper statements anyway. We still encourage you to sign up for e-statements, right? Because it, it is a protection for yourself and very convenient. Um, but you know, handle it the way that you like to handle it and we'll support you in that, okay? Um, let's see, um, conversion weekend, let's talk about that. I'm going a lot longer than I said, I'm so sorry, Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> I think like you, you never to, I give think me a podium and a mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> um, yeah, I need cookies. Uh, uh, let's see, conversion weekend, let's talk about it. Um, Conversion Weekend starts Friday, July 7th. So our Pioneer State Bank branches will close at three o'clock on Friday, July 7th. That gives this team the opportunity to balance everything at the bank. It gives them an opportunity to run statements. We'll run a statement run the night of July 7th. Um, it allows them to um, do all these processes that close out the existing system, okay? Saturday, July 8th, the Pioneer State Bank branches will be closed. That's because we'll be doing the actual data conversion for, um, for all the accounts. So we run a mock conversion, we balance everything, we test our data, 
So even though the branches are closed, many of our friends will be here um, validating data and checking all of our data points. Then on Sunday, the 9th, we're, we're closed. We would have been closed anyway, right? So we're closed on Sunday the 9th. That's where the final conversion process happens so that on Monday the 10th, we open for business on Newmark Systems. So what does this mean to you besides the fact that, you know, we'll be closed a little early on a Friday and we'll be closed that Saturday. We want you to be aware of that so that you, you know, withdraw a little extra cash before the weekend, right? Your debit card, your Pioneer State debit card will continue to work throughout the weekend. It's working in an offline mode though. So I want you to be aware of that because it can't see your balance. Right. So know what your balance is so you don't accidentally overdraw your account. If you do, we'll help you. Don't worry. But um, just, you know, know what you have. Right. So you don't have an, a, an accident um, there. But your debit card will continue to work through the weekend. Uh, we always recommend that people have a credit card as a backup. If you don't have a Newmark Credit Union credit card, you might look into that once we get through the conversion. Let's help you out. So you always have a backup there. Um, Let's see, what do you want to know? You want to know that, um, as a reminder, that Pioneer card works till early in the morning on uh, July 10th, and then your Newmark card will start working early in the morning on July 10th. You'll know because your Pioneer card will literally stop working, <laughs> and then you can try your Newmark card, okay? Sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, you will be able to log into mobile and online banking on Monday the 10th, okay, or thereafter. A couple of post-conversion notes. So after the 10th, after the 10th, not the first day, let's give these guys a break and let them um, you know, help everybody who has an urgent need. Let's get through the, those kind of things. Um, the regular teller transactions, all the normal stuff, right? Let's work through those things. But once we settle in, a week later, two weeks later, stop by your favorite branch and talk to your favorite branch manager, your favorite FSR, and do a little checkup and just say, hey, is there anything I can do? Can I do more with my money, right? We have awesome rates. Right now we have a CD special, which we've been advertising through Pioneer Branches, 18 months, 5% APY, that's awesome. We also have an ultimate high yield checking account that pays up to 5.50% on a checking account. There's a couple little stipulations that you have to meet, but if that's your primary checking account, you're likely doing those things anyway. You, you can't take advantage of that one until we're Newmark Credit Union, but definitely check it out once we switch because we want you to earn as much as you can uh, with your money. Um, that's a really awesome rate for liquid funds. Um, as a reminder, your direct deposits will continue to post. You don't have to change anything with them now. Down the road, we'll have you change that information and get it updated with your new Newmark information. But for now, just let them post. Let see that everything's working the way that you expect it to work. And last but not least, start using your checks, your new checks, after July 10th. If you don't have them quite yet, then don't worry. Keep using your uh, Pioneer State Bank checks until you receive your Newmark Credit Union checks. You should have them by then, but just in case, it's okay to use those Pioneer checks. They'll clear just fine. Michelle, do you want to talk about business accounts? Do you have anything else to add? My gosh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, sure if, <laughs> I'm not sure if they're clapping about all the about the information or that you're done. <laughs> Get that girl a cookie. <laughs> oh. um, I just wanted to let everyone know that their business accounts will be transferring over into a similar account at Newmark. Nothing really changes. Um, I just want to point out though that we do have interest-bearing business accounts. So if you're in a, if you own a business, you have a business account, and you want to start earning interest on your checking account, mm -hmm. come and see one of the staff members, and they'll be happy to put you into that new account mm -hmm. once the conversion happens. We also have business and nonprofit money market funds that. Mm -hmm. Those accounts pay really good interest also, and on the personal side also. And just so that you know, the, the CD special does not have to be new money. So if you want to move some money out of your savings account and put in the yep. CD special, they'll be happy to help you with that. Yeah, absolutely. Very much like new money. 
Yes. <laughs> so I do have to say when Jessica kept saying your Chase account, if you have a Chase account, bring it you here. need to be bringing that checking <laughs> yeah. account to Newmark. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I, I just cannot stress enough. Give it a couple weeks. Come in, see your favorite Pioneer State Bank, who will be a Newmark, uh, Newmark family member. Um, come see them and let's look at, at your situation and make sure that we're, you're doing the best you can with your money, whether it's through your checking account, your savings, et cetera. We want to make sure you, you're earning as much as you can. I'd be remiss our VP of marketing is back there that, you know, one of our slogans is do more with your money. Yeah. So it's all about you saving money mm -hmm. and maximizing your income. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so I think this is a good time to open it up for questions. Does anybody have? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Scott Olson. I'm from Papa. Oh, hi. And I'd like, I have a, a mortgage loan through Pioneer. Yeah. You know, that was a talked about. What happened about that? Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. if you have escrow with your mortgage, so yeah. we're paying your taxes yeah. and insurance, we we pay a third party to service those loans. Those loans are still owned by Newmark. They are not sold loans. They're, your loans are still on Newmark's books. So it's not going to cost me nothing? No, no. No, 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 no. We, we service the loans. Um, servicing mortgage loans, it's it's easy for a really small financial institution and it's easy for the chases of the world, okay? When you're somewhere in between there, you really have to have the volume and the staffing to be able to handle that. We've been partnering, just so everyone knows, again, you did not have any Fannie Mae loans. Those are the sold loans and those were not part of Pioneer's loans. No. So if you had your loan with Pioneer and it went to Midwest Loan Servicing, I promise you we have been working with them well since before I got here. They are, um, they're owned by a community bank. They're not owned by some big bank or a conglomerate of big banks. I've been to their offices before up in Houghton, Michigan. So anybody who snowmobiles or goes fishing, <laughs> it's literally up there in the North Woods. They hire local people. Um, it's, you know, it's a locally run up there. They service a lot of community banks and credit unions. They don't service Chase. They don't service big yeah. banks. So if I, if uh, my payment is taken out of my savings account that will continue it, being taken out from Newmark savings to pay that it, or do I have to do that myself? I, we have our VP of loans there who maybe she can answer that better than me. Sorry, Lori. You should have received a letter from Midwest stating that you would set up automatic withdrawals with their account information mm -hmm. and you should have received that at the time that we gave the servicing transfer over if you're still having any problems with any of your automatic withdrawals you can reach out to our friends here and they'll reach out to me so okay we've yeah. been addressing we've had a couple of hiccups along the way but right. i think we resolved yeah. everything taxes have been paid for first installment of taxes for anyone that had taxes that were due yeah. um, midwest has paid the taxes as well as if your insurance was due we paid as many insurance premiums that that were due prior to the actual conversion okay. yeah i haven't received anything from midwest yet okay yeah. so if, if you don't see your auto withdrawals and you haven't set up the transfer, then um, reach out to the Paw Paw branch and they'll reach out to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We'll you You're welcome. Good question. Anytime, anything with, with Midwest, it's still Newmark. You're, like I said, your loan's not sold. We're literally, they're a vendor for us. So that's the good thing. You come into this branch, you go to Paw Paw, you go to Sublet, yep. you call us on the phone. We'll make those phone calls for you also. We'll, if, yeah. if you can't get something resolved, um, they're really good at Midwest. I had my loan serviced before by Midwest yeah. when I had um, escrow. And honestly, one of us can always get on the phone or email the right department too to get something mm -hmm. fixed. So, yeah. and rest assured that if there are any hiccups, they cannot charge any late fees. They cannot report mm -hmm. you to the credit bureaus for 60 days. By 60 days, we should have everything fixed. And if something doesn't get fixed, 
we have, because they're still our loans, we have the ability to tell them to reverse the charge and to not report something late to the credit bureau while we fix it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be rest assured that we are still in control of those loans, yeah. okay? All right, thank you. And if yeah. any problems, you call us and we're gonna make sure Lori takes care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had a hand back here. Go right ahead. I had a question on the auto pay. Yeah. I've checked both with Medicare and the SERS okay. into state retirement, and they want a minimum of like 60 days, they said, yeah. to transfer. So our, we do have that 60 yeah. day. Yeah, right? you'll have far. Yeah, far, far more than 60 days. Yeah, you'll be just fine. Social Security, honestly, they take 60 days, sometimes 90 days, right? Yeah, it's SERS is, is one that's sort of, you know, notoriously a little slow with that process, right? Um, so you have plenty of time. Don't worry about it. We are not going to turn away anybody's uh, deposits. Yeah, absolutely. We want you to receive. You worked hard for that money, right? You need to receive that. So we want to make sure that that goes to your account, okay? Yeah, great question. And if anything so, ever, like a direct deposit, if something's wrong with that number, we're going to try and match it up with your name. That at, Whatever information we can find, we're going to try and find it before we send it back somewhere. I mean, we still have employees behind the scenes that look at those things individually where, yeah. you know, a big bank, that's boom, gone. Yeah. You know, we still have people who will go through that list. We What do we call that? It rejected. And mm -hmm. someone sits there with that rejected list and tries to match up that deposit with that member. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have the striped shirt on and you've been so patiently waiting. <laughs> How, what can we help you with? We are going to be in Alaska. Okay. We leave on the 28th of June oh. and we return July 18th. Okay. Um, I have it set up that Commonwealth Edison pulls out of my checking account, okay. Frontier. Yep. And I won't be able to update yeah. that information with them. Sure. Let me ask this. Um, do you have those set up through Pioneer State Bank's bill pay? Or do you have that set up directly with Frontier, directly with ComEd or Commonwealth? Yeah, ComEd. I don't do the bill pay. I okay. do Commonwealth. Yeah. It'll yeah. be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, they'll all post okay. I do um, have one concern that I want to um, think about. Do you use a um, Pioneer State Bank debit card? You don't? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll convert you yeah, down we'll the road. Sure get one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to figure out a way, like how do we get that card to you, right? Um, but yeah, your, your payments that are set up, because those will be set up using your um, routing number and account number, those will continue to pay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you're in Alaska and you need to do a withdrawal after July 10th, we, do, we are part of the shared branch network also. Not every credit union in, is in the shared branch network, but a lot of them are. So mm -hmm. let's say you live in Florida for the winter, we could find a credit union down there that you can go and do deposits and withdrawals at and make loan payments. So it's like we have offices everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can find them all on, your, on the app, on the website. Yep, on the app, on the website, absolutely. They're or all there. Or if you're in the branch and someone will be happy to look it up for you. Absolutely. Go right ahead. We have more than one ATM card. So when we receive the coming in the mail, are we going to be able to identify which account that card is attached to? Yeah, I wish that there was an easy way for you to do that. So the easiest way for you to do that, in all honesty, is just call us. Yeah, or we could uh, give your name and uh, have somebody reach out to you um, the second we know those numbers. But if you receive them, when you receive them, if you come to us, we can help you uh, figure out which is which. I know it's so funny because we could do that with the account numbers and give you a table that shows this is your Pioneer account number and this is your Newmark account number, but on the debit card side, because of the timing of having those card numbers, there just wasn't a way to get that included in that information. Um, but we can find it out for you. So whatever you prefer, you call us um, when you get them, stop by a branch, or if you prefer to leave your name uh, with your favorite Pioneer uh, employee, they can help you uh, get that number, okay? And my other question is, with Pioneer, I've experienced different month-end cutoff dates yes. for statements. Yes. Will those same dates be in place with Newmark, or is it all going to be month-end? 
That's an excellent question. We didn't talk about that. So just in case the um, video didn't pick up what that question was, at Pioneer State Bank, um, there are different um, statement cutoff dates. They're all through the month. That is different at Newmark Credit Union. So what's going to happen, we, we do a monthly statement. So end of day, month end, whether that's the 31st or the 30th, that's when statements cut. And then you'll receive them in the first couple days of the month. So here's how it's gonna work for your existing Pioneer accounts. We're gonna do a statement run the night of July 7th, which will include all of your activity through July 7th. And we're gonna send those statements out to you. Your first statement from Newmark Credit Union will be through July 31st, right? So we're picking up after the 7th and doing everything through the 31st. And then at that point, you'll be on a monthly cadence for your statements, okay? That's a really great question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I filled out a card to open a Pioneer State Bank account okay. so I could get all my routing numbers. Is that what I will get at the end of the month? All of a sudden, there it is that I pull up those accounts. Yeah, so you... Um, yeah, so we have a letter that's coming out. You'll receive it the end of end of next week, beginning of the week after that, that will have all of the Newmark number. It'll have your Pioneer number and your Newmark, your new Newmark number on it. Do you need some, mm, I don't know if I can get a Newmark something sooner than that. Um, it'll, it'll be the end of the week. So I could pull up all my accounts because I have everything oh. paid through my my checking account they pay everything for me and i have two deposits that come in okay. one every three months and one month on my social security of course okay perfect and that's all through your pioneer state bank account and that's okay my chest card too. oh, your chest card. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, all right let me let me guess <laughs> southwest or united which one <laughs> I do not have a she chance had to go. She had, she had. Okay, well, that's a start. That's a start. It, it's hard to compete with uh, Southwest and United. Yeah, and so we I got it. it. We got it. Lots of people have lots of relationships, right? We understand. But do check out our credit card because the points are awesome. So it's worth checking out. Um, but if you, I, I'd like to talk to you afterwards just to kind of get some more details about the situation and let's make sure you have everything you need, okay? Perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know he's been patient. You, you talked about e-statements. Yes. So does that mean that you have online banking? Mm -hmm. Online. Yes. Mm -hmm. What security are you using on your online banking for moving money? Uh, I belong to a credit union right now, yeah. and I just had a computer get hacked. Oh. So they call or they mm -hmm. email mm -hmm. with a code. To, to make a movement of money. Uh -huh. And if that code is not transmitted back to them, mm -hmm. that money is secure, yeah. okay? So this, this thing went through for $1,500 oh, well. the other day. They start with $1. Yeah. Then they try for $1,500 and who knows, they'll clear you out. Yeah. But that, the code never came back, so it was stopped. My question is, yeah. what is your security? Yes, we're not using um, Zelle. Not to say you can't use Zelle, right? You could use Zelle through Zelle's app and, and use it that way. Um, but when you're logging into online banking, we use multi-factor authentication. And so you can turn off multi-factor authentication. I do not ever recommend that. I always leave multi-factor authentication on because you want to get a code every single time somebody tries to access your account. Okay, so if I log into my online banking, I'm going to get a code on my phone. You can get it by email, but we strongly recommend your phone. So it's the same system. Yeah, you're going to get a code. You're going to have to enter that code in in order to get even get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell you, I, I can't say that the hackers are not one step ahead of all of us in the industry, but yeah. um, I, we have a top-notch CIO. I, mm -hmm. He's just amazing, and his team yeah. is amazing, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have to remind him we have to take care of our members because he's all about the security. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, yeah. And we 
we voluntarily have audits from third parties that where they try to hack us. Yeah. We go through, we, we are very, very serious about our security. Mm -hmm. We ask that you also be diligent because a lot of times when we hear something happen where the money, unfortunately it was logging in through um, an unsecure internet. Um, please don't ever give away anything. We don't call you and ask you for PIN numbers nope. or we never call you and ask you for your home banking um, password. Those are, a lot of times that's how it happens. Um, someone hacks into your phone or your computer and gets that information. Um, we all know this, we're all out there on the dark web, right? We've all heard about that. Yeah. Unfortunately, my information, your information, they sell it. So um, my favorite one to tell all my friends is stop taking those Facebook quizzes that ask you what your dog's name was when you were 10 years old. It's true. Because people are selling that information because it's a hint to your password and they're exchanging it with someone who has your birth date and your social security number. Mm -hmm. The dark web is, it's a scary, scary place. Really, it is. And at first, I didn't think it existed 10 years ago. And now it's like, oh, my God, it really does. So um, <laughs> identities get stolen all the time. We both know that that happened and had nothing to do with the credit union. Nope. So just mm -hmm. be very careful. And I, nope. I would bet my life on our security. I mean, it is that top notch. Well, the, the uh, um, computer... Uh, system, which was uh, um, Microsoft, mm -hmm. contacted my credit union, mm -hmm. and there then the investigation started, okay. and it it was stopped within within about fifteen minutes. Okay, good. So, um, it's it this this is a problem with email or the you're talking about e statements. Mm -hmm. I don't know what information's on those. And can it be hacked, you know? The e-statement that you sent. So it doesn't come through the email. You will get an email that tells you your statement is ready, mm -hmm. okay. and then you have to go into the secure area of home Logging. banking okay. to get your statement. Yeah. And even then, your statement is what we call truncated, so there might only be a few digits of the last four digits or something yeah. so that nothing is identifiable. Your debit card number's not on there. Your account numbers are not right. on there. The problem with all this is that I got a, a message on a computer and it took me an hour and then yeah. other other banks and places are calling, you know, mm -hmm. over this because they send it out to anybody that they know that you're on with, yeah. you know, banking system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The computer, the computer, Microsoft did that. Okay. So it was, it was kind of a big deal to me. Oh, but it wasn't yeah. a big deal to anybody else, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hackers are good. They're 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 really good. And you know, here's the thing too. If you just even think that maybe something was not right, um, you you get that weird call or that weird text, that weird email, and you thought it was maybe your you know Chase credit card and you gave something you weren't, just call us. We'll we'll check into it, and if, if it'll make you comfortable, we'll open up a whole other account for you. We can move everything over mm -hmm. that was already happening automatically. We can get you a new debit card. We can get yeah. you new home banking logins. We will do, we rather you call us and say, hey, I'm not sure if I made a mistake here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just remember when my husband did it when we were away at a I conference, do. and I about thought I was going to lose it. I'm like, you told them what on the phone? I'm like, <laughs> this is what I do for a living. I was living. So I had to call back to the offices and say, okay, we need to close my account. I don't know what my husband did. It turned out that it was just one of those scams where they were trying to get you to pay for security that really didn't exist. Yeah. They weren't taking the banking information, but still just to be safe, Closed everything out, yeah. redid all the bill pay, so just, yeah, just but now case. we have tools too that will move it off for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure for Emanuel Lutheran Church, we have close to a dozen different accounts, but they all start Emanuel Lutheran Church. Okay. So are we gonna have one member number and then a different account number for each of the... Do they all use the same tax ID number or do different pieces of the organization use different they ones? They certainly use all the tax ID numbers. Do they all have the same signers? No. <laughs> <laughs> no That's I, the kicker. Yeah. So they'll, different signers. 
they'll probably be separate. Uh, yeah, they'll probably be uh, under separate member numbers um, if the signers are different. Um, so do they all go to the do the statements all go to the church or do they go? They all go to the same PO box. Okay. Okay. That's pretty common with the churches that mm -hmm. they have to use one number. So. Yeah. They but all um, have the same. Thing. Yeah, but we won't because one might be the seniors club, the kids club, whatever. So. Yeah, the, it, it's they'll be separate, but um, and make sure you find out about the money markets for the not for profits because they do pay a higher interest. Yes. Rate. For sure. Yeah. Sure. Yes. I just want to make sure I understand this. Yeah. I have several places that have automatic withdrawal from my account. Mm -hmm. So I have to notify each one of those. So not the new routing number and I have time to do that. Absolutely. So you don't have to do anything right away, right? Take your time. It's all going to post. We have these, um, I call them redirects, but we, we have, um, built into the system to recognize the the pioneer routing number and the pioneer account number so that it posts to your correct newmark account in time you will want to get those switched over right but in, by in time i don't mean july 10th i don't even mean july 31st right just down the road when you have time maybe it chip away at you know one a week or something and, and start to move them over i don't want it to be overwhelming for you um, if you have a lot of automatic debits from your account which i do i get it um, it can be it can feel overwhelming so just let see everything posting to your account and posting successfully to your account and then in time say you know what i feel like i'm ready to to start and we'll help you get started down that path and if you need help come in we'll come we'll help you with that okay you're not alone in that we'll, we'll make sure you're taken care of okay so sure. i wrote down something about june 30th on your bill pay mm -hmm. and i the same as hers i have like our water bill and our comment and you know everything comes out yeah. on their due date so I'll through the month out of my checking account. Okay, so let me ask this. Some people who have bills coming out of their account have set those up directly with their payees. So uh, they reached out to ComEd and they gave them their routing number and account number, right. or they reached out to uh, the water department and gave them their uh, yeah, routing. That yeah, is, that'll be just fine. Okay, the, the bill so pay. have to do that before July 7th? No. Bill down. pay is, no. wait, if you log into home banking yeah. and you go and you pay, instead of writing checks out by hand, you go into bill pay and say, send a check to Commonwealth Edison, mm -hmm. that's bill pay. Just, okay. that's something that was part of the Pioneer um, home banking system. We also have that feature. Yeah. But most of us probably use where we go into ComEd and tell them, take the money from my account. Right. Yeah. yeah, if that's how you set it up, that will continue on. Uh, no problems there. Again, in time, in time. yeah, right. get them changed over, but it is not an urgent event at all. Just let everything post to your account, see that it's posting okay, and then you can get that switched over, okay? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to you. Okay, uh, absolutely. The um, personal yeah. checking accounts and the nonprofit checking accounts you were mentioning that could be interest bearing. What's the minimum balance? Uh, next story. I need your help. Uh, I, I'm the op side. <laughs> Not the, the sales minimum side. balance on interest checking. So we have two different types. Mm -hmm. One is common sense checking, and that one does not pay interest, but it, oh, he's going to bring his trusty little uh, worksheet there. Yes. That one, though, if you use your debit card a lot, you get money back. Um, my favorite checking account is the um, ultimate high yield checking. There is no minimum balance, but um, you do have to do certain things to get that 5% interest rate. Mm -hmm. You do have to do debit transactions and have um, an automatic deposit into your account. Mm -hmm. And then what is the balance is up to now? 25,000 yeah, 25, 25, will be paid at that higher interest rate. 5.5% APY. 1% over 25,000. Yeah. So if your so balance yeah, you goes to 25,000 and one cent, then you still get another 1% on the rest of that money. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. In the big packet that you sent a few yes. weeks ago okay. uh, <laughs> online banking. Yes. 
it said that all our records would be destroyed or would disappear. Well, you, uh, you'll need to re-register for okay, online banking. But that's banking. only online banking. Correct. That doesn't mean, like, I have to print out all my statements for the last 20 years. Oh, no. No, no we'll have access to anything. Well, yeah. I mean, well, within Where did I get audited and need that check? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. No, so that's actually a really, really great question. Yeah. So even though you may not be able to access through online banking, right, we still have access to all your old statements, all your old check copies, all the information that you might need to have yeah yeah absolutely if you do want to keep it handy so that you don't have to call us then that's what we recommend is then print out those statements to keep them if that's where you were storing them on home banking yep. um, but otherwise you could come in they'll be able to print those out for you like they always did I think the one thing I, I'm not sure was clear on the pioneer checks if you continue to use your pioneer checks you will not be able to access those through home banking yeah we will be able to get those, but our provider for that service can only do two routing and transit numbers, and they were both, they were both used up. We're trying to get them to change that rule, but that's not going to happen between now and July. So one of the benefits of flipping over to the new mark checks that we'll be sending to you is that those will be linkable through home bank. So how soon are we going to have checks? Soon. Yeah. I don't know the okay. delivery day. Do you happen to? I don't want to tell you a wrong the date. The delivery date for the checks. For the checks. Do we know yeah. yet? We don't know the delivery date. Checks day. will be coming from Nilmar, and then, uh, so we don't buy them from where we normally buy them from? You can buy them, but these checks we're buying for you to get you started on to the new to get started. Yeah. Then yeah. after that, we, then you we are... Use, you can do what you want. You can get them through us, okay, or you can get them from yeah. whoever, but, but you'll need those numbers, the MIGRA right. numbers on the right. bottom of the, of the check. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. But I think we kind of glossed over that part, so that's a big... If you'd like to get your checks through home banking, so just to reiterate, we we're una unable to deliver the Pioneer State Bank checks. Well, it's well, still clear, but we won't be able to deliver copies to you through home banking. But, but again, to, just to make it 100% over, over clear, we will be able to get them internally, but you won't be able to just click on a link and get them. Yeah. Were you going to talk about Golden Years? Is that what you're going to? Well, Golden Years in Main Street. Um, we use, for our check ordering, we use Main Street it's a lot cheaper than deluxe and what you're using. So when you are ready to purchase new checks, please come in and see us because some accounts get free checks each year. So you'll get a box of checks free, um, uh, free each year. So um, if you write a lot of checks, we can still get you multiple boxes. That's not a problem. You just might have to pay a little bit for the other boxes, but you do get that one box for free. Right, right. that's a great benefit of membership. Anyone so over 65 or a premier member, right? Yeah. 65 mm -hmm. and over, and premier members get one box of checks for free. Yes. So it you gather points uh, through having certain products with us, balances with us, services with us. So the more you do with the credit union, the more likely you're going to be a premier member. Right. So we, um, Matt could probably do it off, so I'm not reading. The premier versus... The yeah, um, Premier, it just depends on the services that you have with us. Um, come in and see your Pioneer State Bank bankers. We, we have these little cards that they can show you and go over that with you in detail as to how many points you get per account that you have. Um, if you have a mortgage with us, you actually get um, 500 points a month. So um, they will add up very quickly um, and everything. So we do have the three levels. One's basic, one's advantage, and then the Premier. So just depending on how many points you earn each month, you get put into that category. And if you're in Premier, you'll get free money orders. Free cashier's on checks. Accounts, on loans, sometimes um, specials. So, you know. Since we haven't said it yet, over the last two years and several years prior to that, we've had particularly good years operating-wise, earnings-wise. Can never make guarantees of the future. This year's a little challenging with the interest rate environment the Fed's done, mm -hmm. but we've paid out a million dollars back to our members each of the last two years. And what has it carried over the last like five or ten years, like four and a half or five million dollars? Yeah, that's right. Um, so when we have like a really good year, we share it back. Now that's predominantly provided back to the Premier and Advantage members because they're the ones that are really driving our profitability, those that are using more and more of our products and services. Yeah. But we kind of like to try to really live the cooperative thing, in our, in our, not just in our words, but in our actions. If we've had a great year, we're going to share it with, with our members. And, um, 
It's been very well received by, by people, obviously. We just put money in your account. Right. <laughs> Who doesn't like That's a bonus 200 Chase, bucks yeah. in their account, right? Chase is not <laughs> going to do that. That goes back to the stockholders' <laughs> pockets. It goes Jamie Diamond's <laughs> right. That's always a popular day at the credit union. Yeah, it, yes. <laughs> Free money day. <laughs> do the checks start with our old check numbers, or do they? 2501. 2501. Thank you. Other questions? How many checks are going to be in that first packet that we get? Do you know the count? I don't. Or 50. I can't. We can get back to you yes. on that one, but also, right? Uh, free box of checks a year. So when you use those up, if you're ready for your next one, just come in. We'll take care of you. Yep. So that you have the account number, you have the micker line at the yeah. bottom and everything. But again, if you're in that hey, golden give me that name again. It's not a routing number. It's called something else. MICR. Oh, it's it's called routing number yeah. first, and then the second mm -hmm. one is MICR is just magnetic ink character recognition. Yeah. It's just the, it's, 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 uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> We're being very technical. Very. And then the second one is your account number. Okay. okay. So it's really the same that we have right now. Yes. 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 But, well, same just idea. Just to clarify, the numbers will be different. Yeah. I know that, but the idea of yeah. them. Yes. yes. Exactly. The idea is exactly. is your routing number in a sense. No. Uh, it's, no. Yeah, it's, your it's, your it's, it's more like your account number. Okay. Yeah. Routing it's your account number. Which is still. You're correct. In yes. Right. It sends the money where it goes. We use Micker to refer to the account. Yeah. To what? But you're correct. The whole thing across the bottom is a Micker. That's the whole thing. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little slow. No. No, we have a million acronyms. So. Yeah. I will be, I will, as a, <laughs> no, as a, as a reformed banker, it, I, it took me a while as an employee to wrap my arms around that yeah. whole thing. And it's because of having that high level account number and then all your other accounts falling into it. So at Pioneer, like Jessica said, you had, if you had five different accounts here, you got five different statements with five different account numbers. Oh, yeah. And one could be one, two, three, four, five, and the other one could be, 2,542, right? <laughs> Here it's all going to be under one, and then most of the deposit accounts, like your main account is an 01, and then your checking is usually like a 75 or an 87. And so that is how we identify, so we take it out of the right account, is right. the MICR number. Yeah. Where in banking, your checking account number is your checking account number, it's just a given, right? right. So, yeah. I think it's better. Because you can have like, I don't know, it used to be 99, is it now? How many sub accounts can you have under one? Is it I don't know. We had an employee one time that had like maybe more than that. <laughs> we don't have a dozen yet. So the, okay, you're good. You got time. You got time. <laughs> yeah. We we literally had an employee one time who had laundromat account, um, cat food account. I mean, like she separated all of her savings. It was quite funny. So it, you yeah. could do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Excellent. Did, does anybody still need to enter the drawing for the gift card? You do? Carrie's going to bring you an entry blank. Anybody else not register? OK, in the very back to Carrie. Tiffany, when is your shred day? OK, so you may want to switch all your checks over before the 22nd, because you could bring your old ones to the shred day to have them. July 22nd. July 22nd, yeah. yeah. So, yep, you can bring your tax returns from 20 years ago, whatever you want. It's free, but that'll be a great opportunity to. Yeah. I wanted somebody to put some money, let's say it was out of town, and I. I want somebody to put some money in my checking account. They have to have a deposit ticket, right? No. no. We don't we, require deposit yeah. tickets. We can do it. You can use them. 
can I put in two? <laughs> yeah, you, you can send them in to make a deposit to your account. We won't give them a receipt with your account number on it, right? Because we don't want to do that. We would just send that directly to you. But we ab you could send somebody in to make a deposit to your account. That's fine. Oh, so yeah. I shouldn't You can. You can if, if you, you have, have one. It. But, but if, it's if not they necessary. Don't. Yep. Would, yeah, either way. Right. <laughs> you gladly accept deposits? <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Yes. We we've had people who own buildings like they're renters, and they'll give them the name, what name, and then we'll look it up so they don't know the account number then. Okay. Yes. You get the heart. I'm gonna the easy job. You get the heart. Can somebody give me like a drum roll? Yeah, because one person's gonna be really happy, and the rest are not gonna be happy yeah. with you. Get ready. Yes. All right. The winner is. Barb, I can read. <laughs> Revan, Gold, Oh, oh yay! There you go. <laughs> Look, you can take that on your trip to Alaska. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. It was so nice to get to know you. Um, we love the Pioneer State Bank team. They're amazing. They're going to take amazing care of you. Um, we're going to do everything we can to help them. Feel free to stop by any office, anytime. We're happy to help. Um, if you need to stay for any you know, one on one questions, we're here to help answer those for you. And just um, thank you so much for your membership. We really, really appreciate you and look forward to helping you do as much as you can, or as, you know, as much as you can with your money, okay? Thank you.